Hello, this is my first tutorial. I apologize for the quality, but uh, what we're going to do is set up MoveCraft. Uh, I'm going to be taking this from pretty much uh, ground zero. Uh, so here you can see I've created this directory. All that's in here is this run bucket server batch file. Uh, I'll, I'll just show you what that is. It's very simple. Uh, it just starts Java, and gives it some uh, command line options, and uh, starts up Craft Bucket. Uh, if you need some help figuring out what these should be, uh, you can consult other craft bucket tutorials. This is really going to focus on move craft and the permissions for it. All right. So first order of business is to go get craft bucket. And we can get that from this link right here. Let me start that up. Okay, this is the current recommended build, 1.6.2, and let me get that. Yeah, I'm sure, just download it. All right, so that has started. Let me start some other downloads while I'm at it. This is the permissions plugin that we're going to use. It's YAPP, yet another permission plugin. It seems to work well for what I need. Um, I'm sure there are many other plugins that would work just as well. This is just what I like to use. Okay, let me make sure I'm getting the right thing here. Yeah, okay, great. Great. I have to be careful which download you click on. Don't want to be tricked there. Okay, yes, get it. All right. And finally, let me start downloading MoveCraft itself. Okay, here we are. We go down to the latest version, which is... 3.1.31. I'm going to hope that this tutorial will still be accurate for future versions. Ultimately, there is no guarantee. Okay. All right, we already have Craft Bucket. That's what we really need to get started. Okay. So, in order to get much further, we need to run uh, Craft Bucket in order to create uh, the directory structure that we use for the plugin. So, I'm going to get into my Downloads. I'm going to copy craft bucket into this directory, my demo server directory, and then I'm going to run that batch file. All right, and I can see, okay, it's going to create the world for me. It takes a little while. I can see that it has already created that directory structure which we need, so that's great. And as soon as this is done, there it goes. I'm just going to stop it. All right. Okay, uh, now within the plugins directory, we will place MoveCraft and we will also place yet another plugin, uh, yet another permission plugin. There it goes, that didn't take very long. Now we have to run Bucket Server again. This time we are after the MoveCraft directory structure. So that will be created automatically for me and it's already done. Okay, great. All right. Now I should see a MoveCraft directory. There it is. Excellent. Uh, now I need to concern myself with types. So MoveCraft uh, functions off of cr uh, craft definition files. Uh, this is what tells MoveCraft what types of blocks to allow into the airship, um, various rules the airship must follow, and so on. Uh, I've got a link here that goes, you can go ahead and use these. I find them a convenient baseline. Uh, you can you can use these as a starting point, maybe make some customizations. I have two different types of craft I like to use. Uh, one is the air skiff, which is what we'll be making in this tutorial. Uh, they're very small, very maneuverable, but not very well armed because they're so small and can't be armored because they're so small. Uh, I'll explain some of that later, but here we go. Okay, so I'm just going to put these inside the types directory. All right, and that should be it. All right, now we're going to start up the server and set up permissions. Oh, wait, before I do that, okay, I have to make myself an OP on the server. So there's an ops.txt file. I'll edit that and simply add my character name, which is Bakayaro. Now I have the rights that I need, and here we go. 
All right. So I'm going to start up the server once again. This time I should be good to go. So let me start my client. Which is right there. Hello. Okay. All right, multiplayer, I'm going to join my own server. Now, if I correctly made myself an OP, I should be able to do a slash game mode one, which it allowed me to do, so that means I know that it worked. Okay, let's start setting permissions. So let me uh, move this to the side so that I can read my reference notes here. Okay, so I type slash W-A-P-P. -P. That begins the menu here. Uh, to enter options, I just hit T to enter the text interface, and I'm going to modify a group. What's the group I'm going to modify? I'm going to modify members. This is the default group assigned to people who connect to the server, uh, but don't otherwise have permissions listed. I'm going to hit number one, which is add a permission node. The permission I'm going to add is movecraft.airskiff.pilot. Okay. And you have to do this for each craft type you create. Uh, whoops. Uh, now I do it again. Add a permission. Move craft dot skiff dot move this time. Add a permission. Move craft dot skiff dot rotate. And finally, so I just gave everyone permission to the air skiff type. Now I will give everyone permission to the airship type, the larger of the two. Okay. Give them the move ability. and give them the rotate ability. All right, now I've finished giving everyone the rights they need to have. I'm going to quit this, and I'm going to get back into YAP. I don't know if this is honestly necessary, but I've just always done it, and I'm going to save changes and reload. Okay, and I look up at this text, and I can see that, oh, okay, it's been saved and reloaded. Great, that's what I need. I believe we are now good to go. All right, one permission that was uh, forgotten is the build permission. So I'm going to assign that now, get back into YAP, uh, modify group, modify members, okay, and add permission, yap.build. Okay, that should do it. I'm going to get back out here, Q to quit, then slash yap again, then five save changes. I can see, okay, yes, it's been saved. Okay, great. Um, all right. Now let's make an actual air skiff. So let me get the necessary parts. I'll need some wool. I'll need some redstone blocks. That represents the engines. And finally, I'll need some signs to control the craft. Uh, and uh, just for the fun of it, we're going to put some uh, some weapons on here. And a switch to control that weapon. Alright, that should be all I need. So let me get down here a little bit. We'll build it right there. Okay, I'm just going to build a very small, very simple design. Okay. Let's see. Okay. 
turn off that music. Probably should have done that. Oh well, anyway. Okay. And the two signs, which will allow me to control the vehicle. The first line needs to read what craft type it is. In this case, air skiff. If this was one of the bigger ones, it would say air ship. Uh, I like to put a name down here. It actually does not matter what you have in these three lines. You can have anything. Um, this line just simply needs to read what craft type it is. Okay, and then I'm going to put a helm. This might be a strange place for a helm, but uh, it's just to fit it in this very compact design, and it still works. All right, now, if I've done my work correctly, this thing should fly. Let's find out. Did forget the stick. The stick is what you use to control it. Uh, so I right-click right here where it says Air Skiff Demo. And hey, look at that. I get a message which says successfully piloted craft. And now, as you can see, uh, okay, I can fly until I hit something. Now I can fly. Now, at least as the, at the time of this tutorial, there's a minor bug where um, some of the redstone components can fall off. This is a very simple design uh, to minimize that impact with just the one switch. Uh, but it, it will occasionally fall off. Uh, I know that's being worked on, hopefully be fixed soon. But okay, let me just show you these uh, weapons here. Okay, we can load this with, uh, let's just do some arrows. All right, we need a target. Uh, that sheep. That sheep has angered me, and it shall pay. Oops, I... Okay, I need to get out of... Uh, creative mode. There we go. That sheep. Come here, you. Or that pig is an easier shot. I can't be bothered to actually maneuver. There, I think that's about right. Die, pig! Okay, truth be told, the arrows are not a terribly effective weapon by themselves. But hey, let's, uh, let's switch to something a little higher caliber. Oh, of course, I'm not in creative anymore. That's not going to work. Okay, fireballs. Um, you want to be careful with these <laughs> because they do set things on fire uh, miles away from what you're shooting at. So, you know, be aware of that. Uh, they are very good for fighting other airships. Uh, whoops, I left my switch on. Don't do that. Um, so, like I say, very good at fighting other airships because, you'll note, this is mostly wool. It has to be mostly wool. Uh, and because of that you can set it on fire with the fireballs. Oh, come on, I'm not that bad. There we go. I lit that sheep up. He's now going to burn. Yeah, and there he goes. So the fireball is a very effective weapon. Very good at setting uh, fire to other enemy airships. Okay, and finally, perhaps the most fun, certainly the most expensive, when you can't simply cheat and get all the TNT you want is the TNT bombs. Now I have some uh, airship designs with uh, very precise and devastating cluster bombs, but for now I just want to show you how this can work. Uh, the cluster bombs, uh, they drop in a circle, one drops in between the others and uh, the one in the middle blows up before the other round, ones around the outside, thus sending them all in all, scattering them in all directions. It's, it's pretty impressive to watch, but anyway, this is just a very simple TNT bomb dropper. I think that pig is going to get it. Yeah, poor pig. As you can see, it kind of makes a mess of things under the ship. Uh, kind of scatters uh, in all directions. Not a very predictable pattern, so perhaps not the best weapon since it is so unpredictable, but it gets the job done. And it's a very simple design. You can see one of my signs fell off. Anyway, 
there you have it. Uh, a flying armed air skiff. Um, this is, design is very simple, good for uh, some quick battles uh, if you want to get some of your friends and shoot them out of the sky. Uh, it, it is pretty entertaining once you get your sh ship lit on fire trying to put it out before you die. Anyway, uh, have some fun. That's what it's all about.